In the Bible, from the very beginning, it, it, we, we find uh, that John, uh, the John is writing, and he is writing concerning the cleansing of the temple. And what's interesting is that uh, his very first verse, he says in uh, uh, John chapter two, verse thirteen, uh, that Jesus went to the Jew, to the Jews' Passover. Uh, uh, recognize that that's significant because uh, for those who who understand that, that Jesus was practicing uh, under the law, but he is the law, mm -hmm. simply to fulfill the law, Amen. now distinguishes himself from the Jewish Passover. Uh -huh. And how is it that, that Jesus Christ uh, is uh, distinguishing himself from uh, the Jewish Passover? It is because the Passover represented in Exodus uh, pointed to uh, uh, God's work when he came over Israel. You remember the story. came over Israel. Everybody uh, who was covered, who had a doorpost that was covered in what? The Lamb's blood. God promised to do what? Pass over. And so it was a Jewish holiday in which God now distinguishes himself from the Jewish holiday. Now why did you uh, make a point of that? I made a point of that because whenever you go to a church uh, that only uh, 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 take communion uh, as a form of remembrance of the Passover, I want you to know that Jesus himself did not participate in the Passover for he is the Passover. Amen. Amen. And so, and so, and so uh, communion could not represent the Passover uh, because Jesus himself is standing there and he looks and he makes a point and say that I'm going to go to Jerusalem because this holiday where I can do some work, but it's the Jews' Passover. And even to this day, people are still waiting in Jerusalem for Jesus to pass over. But I got news for you. He's already Passover. passed over. And he's passed over. And he has all power where? In his hand. You can weep at the weeping wall all you want to. But Jesus has already crossed over to the other side. And salvation is here not just for the Jew, but also who? For the, the Gentiles. Jews. And so, so he makes a distinguishing point, a doctor point, if you will, uh, that, that it was the Jews' Passover. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 4 that he was born under the law. Uh, he subjected himself to the law, but it was only to establish his law. Uh, and, and then it says that he found in the temple. Now the temple was a huge place and, and it had a court of the Gentiles. He found in the temple certain men who were selling and buying. It's not to negate that selling and buying uh, uh, cannot take place in the church, uh, but it cannot take place scantily or cheatingly. Are you looking at your Bibles? The verse, verse number 14 of the Bible says what? Once you look at your Bible, once you see this, we found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and charges of money sitting there. And I, I, I want to show you the day. But the problem was not what they were doing because this was customary because people came from Africa. People came from all over the world on the Jewish Passover. And when they got there, they, they oftentimes didn't bring an ox with them on that journey. That's a long journey. To, and if they did bring the sacrifice with them, the sacrifice would be dirty and the sacrifice would be uh, disqualified. It could get sick on the journey. And so what they would do is they would travel uh, from wherever they were coming from and, and they would get to uh, uh, the Jewish, uh, the Gentile section and, and they would get there and they would find these men sitting there and they would go and say, I need a sacrifice so I can offer on the altar of God a, a, a sacrifice. I need to offer sacrifice under God. And these men would go and get an ox or a dove, whatever that was required and, and they would hand it to them and they said, here you go, give me some money for it. The problem was, is that oftentimes they would take in Anthony uh, uh, ox who was sick. They would clean the ox up and they would fix him up and they'd resell him to somebody else who was about to offer it to God. Now here's the teaching here. God requirement of a sacrifice is that it was pure mm -hmm. and holy. Y'all like say amen. His, 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 his requirement of the sacrifice is that oftentimes it had to be a virgin and untouched. Uh, oftentimes his requirement was so specific that any a change, a deviation from what God required, he rejected. Now I want you to say this is going to make sense to you in just a minute. He, he rejected. And so not only were they contaminating of the requirement that God had pertaining to the sacrifices, but they were also endangering the lives of the person who was now offering that stuff over to God. Uh -huh. Are y'all with me right now? Yeah. And so they had, when they got there, they had to give what in the Old Testament? A what? Sacrifice. A sacrifice. The sacrifice had to meet whose requirement? God. God's requirement. And if it didn't meet God's requirement, it 
in danger whose lives? Yours. Theirs and who? The person that's selling. And so Jesus walked into people who are corrupt, who, who are crooked, who are evil, and guess what they are? In the house of God. Y'all got to say amen. Y'all will see this in a minute. In the house of God. Now, we don't read a whole lot about Jesus getting mad. But, but in this case, Jesus got upset. And I don't care, I don't care how you've been taught about somebody that's walking around praying saying, saying, oh, thank you, Jesus, bless you, I forgive you. When you mess with the house of God, right. uh, when you mess with the worship of God, right. God got a problem with you. Right. And I want people to know that's outside of the church of Christ. When you start merchandising the word of God, and you start changing the word of God, and you start causing other people to fall by the wayside, right. messing with the word of God, God still has a problem with you. Man. I don't care how they taught you, oh, sorry, but when you start causing folks to lose their soul, uh, to potentially be damned by God, because you let them false or trick them, God's not only upset with them, God's upset with you. Man. How do you know God was upset? Well, look at the next verse. Verse number 15, the Bible says what? When he got there and found, and when he had made what? He had made a scourge of what? Some small cord. Now hold on a minute. Now, now, now you, have you ever gotten in trouble before? Have you, have, you, have you ever had a whooping in your life? If you raise your hand, if you ever had a whooping, if your old mama ever went and got a switch, uh, did she get one switch or two switches? <laughs> <laughs> y all, y all, how many did she get one switch or two switches? And, uh, and they would take the switches. Yeah, yeah, I'm just talking to folks that have whooping before. You have whooping before. And, and I'm talking about Jesus goes out and get him some switches. Mm -hmm. And he and he made the Bible said cords. That's where your mama got that from. And they would take the switches. And my mama would, and she would twist them switches together. Uh, somebody said, break the switches up so they didn't come loose. Because she meant she was gonna get some natural today. And she would take it and she would break the switches up. And she'd come back and say, boy, did I tell you, and what would happen? You got a woman. Well, guess what? When Jesus came in there and saw them folk messing with the house of God, the Bible said he went out and got him some small cords. And he did what? Drove them where? All out of the temple. Out of the temple. And, and did what? Sheep. And the sheep. Now, why did he drive the sheep in the oxen? Because, because they, they, they did not meet the requirement. Everything in the house of God that was placed there, even in the Old Testament, in that setting, that was not to God's speculate, uh, specs and God's requirement and God's authorization. He had brought out of there, he began to cleanse the temple. Now, now that, that's the sermon right now. You cannot make the Lord's house what you want it to be. Amen. God already designed his church how he wants it to be. Amen. And if you keep messing with the Lord's house, and bring stuff into the Lord's house, God gonna get some switches. Amen. Drive you out. Amen. This will be a problem because the but let me tell you something. God's house in the last verse, he says that by my zeal I consume. Speaking of the resurrection. In other words, no matter what you try to do, and I want folks to know this, no matter what is brought into the Lord's house, it shall never overcome the Lord's house. Amen. You can kill Jesus if you want to, but on the third day, the Bible said he will resurrect again. And he took that time to remind them to show up, there'll be crooked men in the church. So up sometimes the church uh, will get out of place and out of line. And sometimes even the people of God uh, will do some stuff because they want to do it for profit. But I want you to know something. God's church is going to rise to the occasion every time. Uh, I'm not worried about what's happening in this world around the churches of Christ. Uh, because I know that God will raise his church up by the power of God. Because it shall stand forever. Amen. And you, you can lie whatever you want to, but God's church is going to be here. And I don't know about you, but when my time is up, the time should be no more. I want God to raise me up from the grave, having done all I can do to stand for the word of God. Yeah. I want God to give him glory like God said to give him glory. If God said sing and make the bell in your heart, I sung out of that hymns. I just sung praises to God. If God said that I want you to commune on the first day of the week, I just commune on the first day of the week, just like God said to do it. If God said, don't be giving yourself titles and names, I didn't do it, Matthew chapter 23. I just said, I'm Brother Hamilton. If God said to just sing song, the spiritual song, I didn't have 16 people up singing, I just sang the word of God. But something else I didn't do. I didn't spend my trial time to fight folk who did something they weren't supposed to do because that's God's fight, and God's good at straightening our stuff. And if the church 
Now, this is the Lord's church. Amen. This is the Lord's church. And every crooked way, God's going to straighten out. Amen. And every bad path, God's going to clear up. But this is the Lord's church. And God knows how to take care of his church. Amen. Well, look, look at this. We, we spend too much time uh, talking about trivial stuff. Don't you know it's not going to stand? Mm -hmm. It's not going to stand. But the dangerousness of the souls and the lives that could be lost. Let's look very quickly at how evil denominationalism is. How evil it is when men begin to mess with the house of God. No wonder most folk don't even have the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. I, I want to submit to you that when Jesus came to the temple, he signified that it's not where you go that makes the church the church. For we are the church. Amen. If you go to church, you subject yourselves to the things that have been put in that church. Mm -hmm. But if you are the church, you subject your things to that Christ has put in you. Amen. I don't go to church. I am the church. Amen. And since I am the church, uh -huh. I don't let stuff outside the church mess with what God has put inside of me. Amen. The Bible said, let the word of God dwell in you richly and depthly. Let the word, and he said that when we let the word of God dwell in us, rule and guide our hearts, surely it will give us peace. Uh -huh. You find that when you go to church, sometimes you'll find men doing things that they ought not do. Somebody said for filthy liquor. You see, it was profitable to allow folk to walk in the abyss of sin and evil. It was profitable to allow men to believe a lie. Uh, but in the end time, we'll find ourselves in a world of trouble. Church was not a place where you could do whatever you wanted to do, whenever you could do it. Reminded of in this text that those that had a temple, a temple tax to pay, which equaled one and one half shekel a year, which was two days pay. It was paid in a universal form, kind of like the universalism that's taking place right now. Instead of the money that came from the country from which they were from, they not only exchanged the money like traveling from here to Mexico, but they charged exorbitant fees that crippled and almost caused a person not to be able to go home after paying such an elaborate amount. This did not happen outside of the church, but it happened in the church. Man. They had a tax on top of the tax when all the people were required to do was to take care of the church mm -hmm. by paying the temple tax. Then the doves. The worship was required to bring doves for sacrifice. Leviticus 12 and verse number 8. Leviticus 14 and 22. Leviticus 15 and 14. But the worshiper who came to get his dove and offer act of sacrifice under that law was charged 15 times the cost of a dove so that they can make money. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so they were making money hand over fist in the house of God. And folk were paying that money, and then on top of them making money, they would take the sick animals that they have and resell them 15 times the cost of something that had already been deemed sick, worthless, and uncalled for. Amen. Not only were they crooked and, and, and selling to make money in the church and merchandising people's souls. Now remember, people would take these animals up to the altar, to the high priest, uh, and offer for sacrifice. Uh, that sacrifice would be rejected because it does not meet God's requirement. And they would be sent back unable to worship God. How? In spirit and in truth. And they're right about it up. Because they were doing things that God, oh, had got caught up in things that God had not required them to do. Uh -huh. Did not meet the specific case, the specs that God had put in place. Uh, well, what does that mean, preacher? There are a lot of folk who are worshiping God who are offering God a sacrifice and praise uh, that God did not require, yeah. that God does that not meet God's authorization, uh -huh. that does not meet God's specification, and they're calling it praise and worship all over the brotherhood, uh -huh. uh, all over the denominational places, uh, walking around so we have a praise and worship service uh, full of instrumental music, here, and now they start to play secular music in the in, in a so-called church, uh, off next stuff up to God. Uh, but where did God command or authorize such a worship in the temple of God? Remember he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. But you made it a den of thieves. Matthew right. 21 and 13, my house suggesting that he's speaking from Isaiah 56 and 7, that God said that the house of God would be a place of that does what God says it's supposed to do. Man. The house of God is not designed to make you feel happy Good. on Sunday morning. The house of God is 
designed to help the blind spiritual folk see her, the lame spiritual folk walk her, yeah. the sick spiritual folk get well her, yeah. the not happy find joy and salvation her, the unpeaceful find peace in the Lord her. the house of God her, is made for folk to be saved but when folk come to some places they actually lost for coming into the so-called house of God yeah. Yeah. and for that God said you ought to be ashamed of yourself uh -huh. and it's only one time we see Jesus turning over tables and knocking down stuff and driving folk out of the church. How many of you have you ever read that before? Have you ever read it before? Have you, have you ever seen Jesus get physical before? Uh, amen. And, and, and folk wants you to believe. See, God is serious about the house of God. Amen. He's serious because it's in the house of God by which he intends to save man. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5, on the 25th, 26th verse, the Bible talks about he's coming back again for the house, for the church. He, that he may present the church. Yeah. Now watch how he's going to present the church. He may present the church as a glorious church without what? Spot, Spot or nor blemish. Man. But he's not going to present a church uh, that you make the church into what you want it to make the church. Uh -huh. Where in God's church uh, is there an instrument? Where in God's church are folk not giving him glory? Why are you sitting here like you can't shout and say, Man. thank you Jesus this morning? Uh, where in God's church uh, did they have uh, women preachers? Uh, where in God's church uh, did they have instrumental music? Uh, where in God's church uh, did they have statues? Uh, where in God's church uh, did they do some of the things that we see in the church? Uh, dancing in the Lord's house. Uh, dropping it like it's hot in the Lord's house. Uh, walking around looking for men and women in the Lord's house. Where is it in God's church? Amen. Can't you find it. Why? Because uh, some folk have made the Lord's church into what they want to make it. But if we stand on God's word and we remain uh, in the pattern and in the specs that God has left, everything is going to be all right. Now watch this just for a minute. The Bible says concerning worship, in John 4, verse number 23, the Bible says, but the hour will come and now is. Now watch this. The hour will come and now is that the what? The true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeketh one that will worship him. God just don't want to be worshipped. He wants to be worshipped how he has designed to be worshipped. God designs to worship, not man. I know some of you are real smart, but God says, I want to be worshipped the way I design to be worshipped. Under the old law, folk brought in over 600 laws and added to the Old Testament laws. They brought in stuff into the cows that was not put there by God. In fact, some folk try to get as close to God's teaching as possible that they may merchandise the souls of men. I know this is a good old church of Christ lesson, but you're going to get this lesson this morning. Because you need to know there's a distinct thing about the church of Christ. You need to know that God did not leave the church to other men's hand. But we are a distinct group of people who worship God how God says it, when God says it, and we don't ask why God said it. We just do what God says to do. Amen, wolves, cockroaches, bats, bumblebees, snakes, alligators, goats, roaches, and mouses. Amen, anyhow. Amen. Uh, when we look at this great text, we find that in this, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How many people have you heard say every now and again that I want to go to a church and just simply preach how good Jesus was? Well, I do. I want to go to a church that preach how good Jesus was. But I want them to include how Jesus saved a bad man like me. Man. I just want to hear how good he was. But I need to hear how he reached down into the mire and clay. With all my history and past, he pulled me deep down out of the pit of sin and allowed me to have salvation. Man. For a church that simply just preached the goodness of God uh -huh. had certainly left you in a damnable situation. Uh, some churches say you only saved by grace. But that's not true because we know that grace can, 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 can cause us to misuse and abuse the love and mercy of God. Galatians 5 and verse number 4. The Bible says, see that you have fallen from grace. Indicating that grace alone can save no man, but grace and obedience together can take us on the glory. How many of you want to make heaven your home this morning? Uh, because it's going to take more than just grace. But it's going to take grace and faith and obedience in God. In fact, when grace came in John 1, uh, verse 70, verse 11, the Bible said that the law came by Moses. But grace and what? Truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and what? Truth. Truth. 
came through Jesus Christ. Christ has become a matter of fact, seeing that you've fallen uh, from grace. In other words, you cannot eliminate or have just grace by itself. We have to have Christ and grace. And where there's Christ, there's law. There's requirements that Christ has. You might remember in Acts 17, verse number 23, the Bible says, Paul was riding through and he saw somebody with an altar made to the unknown God. He said, whom you do worship in the him, I declare unto you today. He said, I was passing through and I beheld your worship service. It looked like he was trying to worship something. But let me tell you something. The God that we serve is not made how you want God to be made. The God that we serve don't act according to the way you want him to act. But the God that we serve is not controlled by men. But God is God all by himself. Man. I'm glad that I serve a God that's not moved by men. Because if men can influence God, we'd be in a whole lot of trouble, wouldn't we? Mm. If, man, if, man, if God would allow men to influence what he decides to do, there would never be justice in the world. But God is not moved by men. God is God all by himself. For who has been God's counsel? Who has been God's, uh, who's been God's Lord? He doesn't need one for he is the law and the fulfillment of the law. Then we look not only at the fact that there's requirements in worshiping God, that it must be in spirit and in truth. How God says it, what God says it, the way God says it, but there's also a revelation concerning God uh, uh, that, that will protect us from the merchandise of our soul. But at the end of this text, uh, we find that they had merchandise people's soul, and the people didn't even know it. Uh, they were sent in the temple, had traveled from one country to another, had traveled across the sea, had traveled on land to come and to have uh, uh, to have the, the Passover, the Jewish holiday, uh, and got there and lost uh, their salvation, lost uh, the, the, what was required of them by fooling with men. Can I warn you this very quickly? Make sure that whenever you go into a church that you're not being merchandised. Amen. Make sure that when you Amen. go to a church that they're standing on the word of God. You need to make sure because God's not going to use for an excuse that Eve made you do it. Uh -huh. God's not going to let you use for an excuse that that man taught me something wrong. Uh -huh. God intends for each of them ones to stand and to give an account for our own soul salvation. Amen. So you are required according to 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 to study to show thyself approved. It may feel right, it may seem right, it may look right, but you need to make sure because we have been warned through God's word that men is going to come around and try to merchandise your soul. And think about all the hell you've been through in your life just for a moment. Think about how many times people have used you over and over again. Think about your sad days and your up and down days. Think about all the stuff you've been through. It's been hard just to make it to this point. To come into a place that identifies itself as the house of God only to lead you farther away from God than you ever have been before. This was insulting, insidious to God. And God said, I know what, I'm going to drive you out of the temple. What are we warned in the Bible about such merchandise? 2 Peter 2 and verse number 3. Look at the Bibles, if you will. And through covenants, these men wanted money. They wanted stature. They wanted power. They wanted authority. And through covenants shall they fringe words make merchandise of you. They'll preach stuff that sound good to you. They'll preach and tell you, you don't have to be baptized. They'll preach and tell you, we're all children of God. They'll preach and tell you that all you got to do is ask God to come into your heart and shall be saved. They'll preach and tell you that God will never judge you. But I'm going to tell you something. God is the ultimate judge. Yeah. His word judge and convict us. It'll tell you, don't listen to them old church of Christ folk because they ain't talking about nothing. They'll preach sour sermon after sermon. You have to never speak against sin. Everything you do is okay. God's all right with it. They'll preach every time they get an opportunity and tell you just how good God is. And they'll good you up because they're just like a, the candy man. You remember the candy man, don't you? The Bible, I'm not about the candy. You remember that said song, the candy man can. What did the candy man do? He took everything and he put it and he turned it all around and made the world taste good. There's some churches that'll make everything taste good. If you want, if you, if you want to live any kind of way, they'll preach and never address sin and error in your life. They'll merchandise you just so they can get your offering and get your attendance. But a church that's a Lord church will preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, is all, all long-suffering doctrine. And let me tell you something, folk didn't like Jesus then preaching the word and the difference in him and the world and the spoken here right now that don't like uh, people preaching the word about the church. Uh, but it's his church. Uh, and salvation is only found in his church. Yeah. And what you're arguing is trying to figure out what do you mean by it's his church? Uh, every church is not the Lord's church. Uh, and all your friends need to know that 
that you're a member of his church, a distinct church that follow God's will and God's way before they merchandise your soul. And I fear sometimes that Satan has bought off a lot of you. Man. Paid off a lot of you. Because you can't shout and give God glory. Really? If you're a member of the church, can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you. Jesus. Can you say why you're glad to be a member of the church? Amen. Can you give God, aren't you glad that you're a member of the Lord's church? Can you tell somebody that you're a member of the Lord's church? Do your friends know that you're a member of the Lord's church? Can you raise your hand and say thank you, Jesus? I'm a member of the blood bought institution. When we look at this wonderful text, we find that these men had set up shop even in the house of God. Get from the first key, I'm almost done. First key chapter 12, 29 through 33. Because you need to understand that Satan intends to lead as many of you straight to hell as he can. You, you had had any trouble yet until you lose your soul. As long as you're breathing, mm. you have an opportunity to make heaven your home. Man. Satan has infected some of you with the wise guy. Can't nobody tell you nothing. But, the, but as long as you live, you got an opportunity. Satan's infected some of you with the emotionalism. And you, if you, if you got to feel some miraculous thing while you're sitting down. Because you think worship is about you. But worship was never designed for us. But it's designed for us to give glory to God. Man. Some of you are sitting there right now who are just numb to the word of God. Who are found in John 12. Uh, around the 47 verses when he said that, that he said they hold their eyes and hold their ears and they should see with their eyes and understand the heart that should save them they should be converted some of you sit here right now Satan has stopped your ears up to the word of God you're on your way to hell but you got a chance if you just stop and look for Jesus Amen. as long as you have breath in your body you can make heaven your home Amen. you got to look at how you look right now Satan took your glory and your joy and when you hear the truth you can't even relate to the truth he's polluted you he's merchandised you that you want to hear what you want to 